Welcome to our DFA channel. DFA stands for Decentralized Farming. We are here today at our first role model farm in Kenya because we truly believe that the DFA movement is necessary for countries to feed themselves and fight against hunger. Small scale farming offers a variety of ways to effectively fight against hunger. Our concept contributes to food availability, it generates income by creating jobs for households which are included in the processing and the sales process. In today's world, problems such as hunger and food insecurity are still a relevant topic. The conventional agriculture is reaching its, lim its limits and contributes to climate change. In addition, we have a rapid population growth with an increasing food demand and therefore also the risk of hunger increases. That's why our mission is to create attractive and future-oriented jobs and to build a self-sufficient economy where people can feed themselves and are not dependent on big food industries. Today I'm here with the project's manager Alex. And Alex, maybe you can introduce yourself and explain us what is a decentralized farm. Uh, good morning, my name is uh, Alex and I am the projects manager for various projects which we do within and around the community. Uh, today I would like to talk a little bit about uh, the current project which we have uh, ongoing here at the moment at the Hacienda Social Farm. Um, I would also like to explain a little bit about decentralized farming, the type of farming which we do practice here. And uh, by decentralized farming, uh, in essence, what it means for us is that uh, we no single entity or um, no single entity or group uh, influences the decision making that we have here on our farm. So we delegate and we distribute mainly within the planning and decision making of our organization. We distribute and delegate these, uh, these uh, tasks, various tasks and responsibilities to um, uh, different individuals within our organization and outside of our organization. So for example, sales, uh, supply, so on and so forth. So as much as possible, we try to decentralize this. We, we, we do not uh, delegate these tasks to any one single entity or group. What is the difference between tree planting programs and a decentralized farm? Okay, uh, let me explain to you a little bit uh, first about tr the tree planting programs, which uh, are ongoing in and around the communities here. Uh, tree planting programs are in fact highly detrimental to the environment. They're highly detrimental to the community which practices these uh, tree planting programs. Mainly within our, in and around the area here we have uh, tree planting programs going on from various organizations and uh, they pro provide and uh, not only the seeds but they also provide the um, the knowledge for propagation of these uh, trees. Mainly around here we have uh, blue gums, which are euc eucalyptus trees. Now, problem with eucalyptus trees is number one, the, the, the leaves are extremely high in nitrogen. So as you can see at the base of the trees, of the, of the, where the, the area which has been selected to do propagation of uh, blue gums, the base, nothing else grows on the base. So it's a void of any other vegetation. Number two, the problem with blue gums is uh, it is uh, highly intensive uh, in the way they do a spacing of 1.5, 1.5 uh, meters between each tree. Now it's highly detrimental to the environment in the sense which it uh, depletes the groundwater. Blue gums uh, completely dry out uh, any groundwater or any aquifers which are, which are below, creating a very arid, dry and um, extremely um, non-conducive environment for other plants to grow. Also, once the tree planting program has uh, finished and the trees have been harvested, the land needs to be regenerated after that. So the plants do not naturally re regenerate the, the soil around. This is another project which follows uh, after this, um, this tree planting program. The difference between the tree planting programs and the decentralized farming is uh, the difference is very obvious, but um, to explain a few points, 
is the decentralized farming is we do a variety of different uh, plants and products that we produce on our decentralized farm. We do not focus on one single um, uh, species. Another point with the, the difference between decentralized farming and tree planting programs is the decentralized farming, as I mentioned earlier, is uh, we have a variety of different uh, plants, trees, which we, which we utilize within our farming project. Now, the benefit, about, of, uh, the benefit of using a variety of trees is uh, we give back to the soil. So not only do we provide and produce what we need to sustain ourselves, to sustain the community within and around us, but uh, after we have harvested, at the same time, we are also regenerating the soil. So we do not need to regenerate the soil independently after this. It's all a, it's a cumulative process, which, uh, which is ongoing as we carry out uh, the daily projects and uh, the daily production of what we do here. How does our decentralized farming concept create jobs and does the system also work in Europe or in Germany? Okay, um, so our decentralized farm here produces, uh, provides, um, provides sufficient labor and job opportunities for the community around us. Now, it does that by a number of different ways. We have uh, various uh, positions which need to be filled from farmhand to um, organic waste separation to um, animal attendance and um, various projects within, within, in and around the decentralized farm uh, requires many hands. And uh, these hands we we get from the local from the local communities around. And this labor we do acquire from the from the communities uh, around, which does provide a sufficient um, uh, sufficient sustenance for the community and for those who do work within our decentralized farm. Now, to say if uh, decentralized farming will work in Europe or elsewhere. From my, from, from my point of view and the experience which we've had uh, set, setting up our decentralized farm here, I believe that decentralized farming can and will work um, in the rest of the world. And does it make sense to recultivate soil? And what are the possibilities offered by organic methods? Okay. Um, it is absolutely possible to recultivate the soil, but uh, within the current project which we're doing here, there is no need to recultivate the soil. We employ organic, fully organic methods here. Uh, we use zero, zero chemicals, zero chemical additives, zero chemical fertilizers, uh, whereby this uh, gives us the opportunity to reuse the soil time and time again. As I explained earlier, as we produce the products which we have here, uh, the process which that entails, as we harvest, we are already regenerating the soil, seeing as we use 100% uh, organic methods. So we have no need to, um, to reinstate or rejuvenate the soil after we've uh, finished um, extracting the products which we require. Why do we should get away from big agro-monopolists and the Shimo gene industry? The reason is first, first and foremost that we have created in the agriculture industry, we've created uh, huge problems for ourselves. In maintaining the crop, we do have much higher yields, yes, that is correct, but to maintain those yields and to reach that stage, there's, um, there's a high economic input, there is um, huge detriments to the environment, and uh, it is extremely unsustainable. So not only is it uh, difficult and labor intensive to produce this, uh, these high yields, but uh, we are destroying the soil and uh, the flora and the fauna around the projects of these uh, agriculture industries. What positive consequences has the small-scale farming, DEFA, on the quality of the food? Um, the effects on the quality are absolutely outstanding. We, with the decentralized farming methods that we employ here, the food quality is absolutely fantastic. Uh, not only do you notice that in the taste of the food, but also in the feeling after you consume the food. Digestion is uh, very easy to di digest, um, very easy to, for, your, for your body to process, uh, high energy levels after you eat the food, and um, the, the effects are immediate. Okay, so our food is 
completely organic. Absolutely, 100% uh, organic. How do we make sure that the food is 100% organic? We make sure by in the process of which we, we grow our food, we ensure that no chemicals are used, no spraying, no pesticides, no chemical fertilizers. Um, any additive we use is natural and is uh, um, fertilizer is animal waste or organic waste. Uh, and we ensure that no chemicals um, and we ensure that no chemicals come within that uh, process. And how can we prevent food losses and high food wastes with FIFA? Okay, so we prevent uh, food loss. In fact, we have zero food waste here on the farm. What we produce uh, um, as a product that we sell and uh, anything left over, we provide to the community around us, the workers that we have here, the labor force which we have here on the farm. Anything after that, anything which is uh, spoiled or has not made, is not fit for human consumption, we now use that to feed our livestock. We give that to our livestock. Now, thirdly, after the livestock, if we have excess after taking care of feeding our livestock, we recirculate that, um, uh, any overproduction, we recirculate that into our organic um, uh, waste fertilization. Okay, thank you, Alex, for your interview, and we hope you were able to understand a little bit more about decentralized farming. Thank you very much for having me. At the moment we have 20 local women working here and they are very happy that they found a job because of our decentralized farm.